So today's video will be going through on how to insert an EBD, tutorial 101. Um, just ignore the background noise because it's currently raining and it hopefully doesn't go through the mic. So what is an EBD? EBD stands for external ventricular drainage. It's a basic neurosurgical procedure we can do to divert CSF. So CSF is cerebrospinal fluid. So it's a fluid that sits within some of our fluid chambers within our brain. And we use it as a way to divert some of that to an external collection system. Why do we do it? So one reason is hydrocephalus, um, which means enlarged fluid chambers within the brain. And there could be a number of reasons for that. Um, if we want to monitor the intracerebral pressure within the actual brain itself, but there are other ways that we can probably do that. If we want to clear any blood products or infections within these fluid chambers, so if there's a bleed that happens within it, if there's severe infection that's resulting in poor drainage of the fluid system, um, and sometimes with major skull base or posterior fossa surgeries, um, and we repair the dura, you want to try to promote the healing of it. And it can be prophylactic, especially when we're concerned about the potential of leak. So this is a little bit about the fluid system. So within these fluid chambers within the brain, it's with it deep within the brain, we have choroid plexuses and they actually produce the cerebrospinal fluid. So they're usually mainly around the lateral ventricles. So here are your two lateral ventricles. You can see them on either side. They then go through the foramen of Monroe or the interventricular foramen into our third ventricle. Once they're in a third ventricle, they then drain through a channel called the cerebro, cerebral aqueduct. Then they enter the fourth ventricle, as you can see. And then from the fourth ventricle, there's a few ways they can escape. They can go down to the central canal. They can go through the sides called the lateral apertures, or they can go through the back called the median apertures. And then they surround the entire brain. Um, and there's a, we can go through another episode on the number of, the number of benefits of CSF and the role of CSF in the brain and spine. But that's another topic for another day. So in terms of inserting it, so really we're trying to aim for the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles. So we want to mark the midline. You want to find cautious point, which is 11 centimeters from the nasion, three centimeters to the side, usually on the right-hand side, because that's our left-hand domosphere. And that's the insertion of the EVD. And I've made a video uh, to help demonstrate the process. So it's a more visual, better visual representation. So we'll walk through that bit about the landmarks of the skull and where to insert um, the EVD. So we start off by identifying the most prominent point, the nasion. And we're going to travel 11 centimeters back. So of course you'll use a sterile um, marker in, in reality that you'd mark out the 11 centimeters and it should correlate um, with one being one around one or two centimeters from the actual coronal suture. I always find it's a good idea to mark out the midline so that during the operation you would know you would know if you're going to be away from the actual Sagittal, um, the sagittal, uh, superior sagittal sinus. Next, you want to be around three centimeters to three and a half centimeters away from the midline. So I marked that as well. And that should really correspond with the mid pupil line, as you can see. Once you've got your incisions marked out, then you would want to sort of draw a small incision line. And then 
you've clearly identified your landmarks. When you're prepping with your drapes for the uh, procedure, you want to try to give your prep the midline and make sure you have a large angle so that once you've actually put the EBD in, you have space to tunnel the EBD out. Next step is, of course, you'd go through the skin, the muscles, and you'd reach the bone. You'd use a periosteal elevator to, um, um, to get the periosteal off the bone, and then you'd use a drill. In most situations, you have an electric drill um, in, in a theater situation. However, there might be some certain circumstances in a ward or an ICU where you might need to use a handheld drill. So this is a Codman's handheld drill. You can use um, um, an adjuster to adjust the depth and that prevents you from penetrating past the bone and into the brain. And you can identify how deep it is based on the scans as well. So once you're happy with the depth, you would place it perpendicular to that point. And this one is just a manual sort of drill, but the, uh, the easier one is the more electric drill. You would then perform the burr hole. You would then make sure that you've achieved hemostasis and there's in bleedings under control. Once you hit the dura, you would want to do a cruciate cut. So making a cross, then performing a corticotomy in the cortex. And then you're ready to put in your EVD. So here's an EVD stylet. It has markings across. This one is more for trauma EVDs. And you have a stylet on the top that you can take out. So what you would do is you'd make sure the stylet's all the way in. I always hold my finger around. So five to seven centimeter mark is usually where you would find your, when you will achieve CSF flow. And I rarely pass that point. So if you measure on the CT scan, let's say it's six, I put my finger there so you're not going to penetrate past that. Next, you would make sure that your EBD goes exactly perpendicular to the brain. And once you hit CSF, and you can see the CSF flowing up the chamber, then I would t you can introduce the um, the... EVD one centimeter without the stylet, and then you can remove the stylet behind, and the tube stays behind. You then connect the end to a cap, tunnel it out the skin, and close the incision. And of course, in terms of EVD or any procedure, you're going to encounter certain risks. So infection, um, and if infection occurs, it's important to exchange the EVD about culture, the samples and give appropriate antibiotics. Bleeding can occur um, and making sure you achieve good uh, hemostasis during the procedure and identifying where the bleeding is coming from. Of course, there's the risk of an EVD being misplaced, but that's why we position mark is um, the um, location well and understanding that when you're inserting the EVD um, you have a rough idea in terms of direction and where you're traveling and if if it, and you're not passing past the point of sort of seven centimeters where past that point we're sort of unlikely to expect um, the return of CSF dislodgement of um, EVDs can occur with brain swellings or anything any blood, different types of causes. Depending on the cause, if it's inserted due to a bleed, the risk of obstruction and the cl clottage of the EVD, which might require replacement, so, um, a heart attack, stroke as a result of a procedure, or any fluid leakages from the brain, which are much more uncommon. And so there you have it. That's the sort of rough general step-by-step um, -step instructions of an insertion of an EVD. If you um, have any other ideas for the upcoming videos, let me know. But otherwise, stay tuned.